Do you remember those games when you first started to get into a genre? Yeah, myself, I started with Dragon Quest back on the original Nintendo, but I didn't really get into JRPGs seriously until the very late 90s and early 2000s. Grandia was one of the first ones I played, and it recently got an HD release on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Hey yo, my name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs. Grandia HD originally released on Switch and later PC, but now that it's got a release on Xbox One and PlayStation 4, I thought I should give it a shot. It has its goods and it has its bads, but is it worth playing in 2024? That's what we're here to talk about, but before I get into the whole pizzazz here, make sure to click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me your story with Grandia. Anyways, enough chat, let's get into the nitty gritty of Grandia HD Remastered. You know what I miss these days? JRPGs that give that whole feeling of adventure and discovery. More often than not, JRPGs just don't have that adventure feel to them. There's always something going on that encourages your party to go on an adventure. Be it revenge, tracking down a missing person, or solely because you're told it's your duty. In Grandia, you play the role of Justin. Hey, his name is like my name. Well, that's neat. Anyways. As Justin, you've always wanted to be an adventurer like your late father. He even plays adventurers with the town bully on a regular basis. One day Justin meets with the curator of the local museum and gets permission to go on his own adventure through the local ruins of Ancient Angelo. While exploring, he runs into a holographic projection of an ancient Angelonian named Liette. Justin is then told by Liette he should go on an adventure and find the ancient city of Alent. The next morning, Justin sneaks away from his home hops on the steamer, and starts his adventure. This feeling of adventure is what sets Grandia apart from other RPGs. Sure, Justin is told he needs to find the lost city of Alent, but it's because Justin desires adventure so deep in his heart that he jumps on the chance to go on this adventure. You get the feeling of, I have no idea what I'm doing, but this is what I was born for. And born for it he was. I won't go too deep into the story, because this game's story is beautiful and deserves to be experienced from scratch. Speaking of beautiful, can I just talk about the graphics of this HD remaster? The original Grandia on PS1 was gorgeous, amazing pixel art, and wonderful coloring. This is an HD remaster, so naturally this should look even better, right? Wrong. I don't know what they were thinking, but Grandia HD uses some sort of terrible post-processing filter. I believe the term is called bilinear. It just smudges the pixel art and makes it look so blurry and unappealing. Though, the widescreen and sharp font is incredibly nice. That being said, sure, it looks like crap, but the story is still wonderful. So Grandia is a turn-based RPG. It has a bit of twists that make the battle system incredibly unique, and to this day, remains incredibly unique. Grandia uses an active time battle system somewhat similar to the Super Nintendo Final Fantasy games. However, what makes it unique is the IP system. But before we go into the details of the IP system, let's discuss how battles play out. At the bottom of the screen, there is a turn or IP gauge. The IP gauge is separated into three main sections, wait, command, and act. While waiting for your turn to come up, characters and enemy portraits will slowly scroll to the right. Once it hits the command line, the game freezes and you can enter a command for that character. If it is a special move or spell, charge time will begin, with stronger and lower mastery techs taking longer to charge than, say, fully mastered techs or weaker spells as they are faster. Anyways, once the charge time ends, signified by your portrait hitting the end of the IP gauge, which is the act section, the move will be executed. Anyways, what is IP? That's kind of strange for a turn gauge, right? Well, IP stands for initiative points. Initiative points determine how fast a character can act, almost like a speed stat, and every attack can deal IP damage. This is a hidden value, so you don't really see it on screen, but when you deal IP damage, it will halt that character or monster on the IP gauge, with stronger attacks even knocking that character backwards on the IP gauge. Furthermore, if enough IP damage is dealt while somebody is charging for an attack, it can actually cancel that attack and send them halfway back down the IP gauge. Being able to affect the IP gauge in various ways adds a bit of strategy to the combat. Do you want to halt a single enemy's turn by pelting them by weak attacks, or should you attempt to cancel it? Maybe it won't be safe to charge for a powerful attack? All these things that need to be considered. 
Outside of battle, town exploration is what you might expect. However, looting isn't all that common as it is in most RPGs. Dungeons are the same way. Enemies are encountered on screen, so there's no random encounters. One concern I do have with towns and dungeons is the camera angle. It's way too high and results in making it very hard to navigate, resulting in getting lost all the time. There are no mini maps, and the only way to view anything in dungeons is to find these little blue flag symbols called dungeon scopes, and they give a bird's eye view of the immediate area. In towns, you can just press the touchpad and get the same effect. I ended up using a guide for maps of each area solely so I wouldn't get lost all the time. So I just want to give a shout out to Shotgun Nova for his ASEII maps over on GameFAQs. Unfortunately, Grandia does not have an overworld. The world map is point and click. I know this isn't preferable, but it doesn't necessarily harm the game. What it does harm is the fact that Grandia has an incredible amount of one-time dungeons, sometimes for no reason at all story-wise. You just can't re-enter that dungeon which really gives that feeling of FOMO, making you worried that you'll miss out on loot permanently. Not the best feeling in the world, but outside of mana eggs, nothing major can really be missed. Usually it's just money or equipment that could have been purchased in the previous town, so it's just, I guess, a way to save some money. Let's start with the voice acting. Yes, Grandia does have voice acting, both in battle and for very select story scenes. Back in 1997, voice acting was not incredibly common. In fact, the biggest RPG release of 1997, you may have heard of it, Final Fantasy VII, had no voice acting whatsoever, so Grandia having voice acting was kind of a big deal. Anyways, how is it? Is it quality voice acting? Is it going to win an Emmy? No. No, it's not. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It sounds terrible. Especially Justin, his voice acting will make you cringe in almost every single instance because it just sounds so corny and almost laughable. For me personally though, this voice acting improves the experience. I adore bad voice acting. Arkrai's Fantasia, Chaos Wars, Resident Evil, it's all so beautiful. On the plus side, the HD remaster of this game does have dual audio. So if you don't want to listen to the comical English audio, Japanese audio is always an option. As for the music, Grandia has some very good music. So Grandia is separated into three main sections, or acts if you will. Each act has a different main battle theme. And even beyond this, there are also two main battle themes in each act. One for a neutral or advantage battle, and another if you get ambushed. I love the ambush battle themes, they're just so aggressive and fearful. They just sound so good. As for towns and dungeons, nothing necessarily mind-blowing, but each piece of music is really well done. It sets the mood incredibly well and just adds to the enjoyment and experience. I know everyone is wondering, so how much time should you spend from Grandia HD? Well, honestly, that depends what you want to get out of the game. My playthrough for Platinum took me 62 hours. This includes finding every mana egg, so naturally more exploration and doing all three of the optional dungeons. The Castle of Dreams, Soldier's Graveyard, and the Tower of Temptation. These dungeons add no lore and no story. However, if you want to just play the game and get through the story, you could probably finish the game in 30 to 40 hours. As for the pacing, the game is incredibly linear. I mentioned it earlier, but Grandia has a lot of one-time only dungeons, and very little backtracking. Each area is quickly progressed, and you easily just move on to the next one. I don't mean this as a negative, just that the game is very fast paced, which depending on your gameplay style, you might actually prefer this. So there you have it. Grandia was a great game, and having it on modern hardware with HD graphics makes it easier and more fun to play. Have you played Grandia? What are your thoughts? Let's all get chatting in the comments because I'm always hanging around there and enjoy reading each and every one of them. If you've enjoyed this review, why not consider giving my video a like, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. As always, thanks for stopping by, thank you for your support, and have a wonderful day. Super Retro